Are you ready for people to start finding you on Google? Are you sitting there staring at your show at workspace, wondering how the heck to optimize your website for search engines like Google? You just created an amazing website and the last thing you want is for it to go unnoticed. If you wanna see exactly what you need to do to start showing up online, be sure to keep watching because you're in the right place. And welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Caressa and I'm a show website designer dedicated to helping you get your website launched quickly and effectively. If you're struggling with how to set up your SEO, trust me, you're not alone. Now, what is SEO anyway and why is it important? SEO stands for search engine optimization. And basically it's just all those things that you do behind the scenes to increase your chances of your website appearing higher in search engines like Google, Bing, or Yahoo. So when someone types a word or phrase into Google, so let's say Minneapolis photographer, search engines search through everyone's websites to decide which websites are gonna be most relevant to that user. So how do they decide which websites are the most relevant? Well, honestly, it's kind of a complicated system, but put simply, it's kind of a balance of all the content and organization of your website. I'm just gonna be covering the basics of SEO in this video, but be sure to subscribe for more videos just like this to come. So let's talk about all the SEO tools that are available in Show It. When we pop into your Show It Builder, you'll see your workspace appear with all of your pages shown on the left side of the screen underneath the site tab. You can actually set up some SEO settings and more specifically what's called an SEO title, meta description, and meta keywords within your Show It account for each page. So we'll click first into the home page as an example and make sure on the right side we're under SEO settings to begin. Now, before before you start to fill this section out, it's really important that you've done some keyword research. Some easy ways to get started with keyword research are just by heading on over to either Google or Pinterest or even better, both. I recommend doing this in an incognito browser so they don't have your previous search history to sway the results, but just start typing in some keywords and see what Google suggests for search options. This will give you a good idea of the phrases that people are looking for. So for example, let's say you offer newborn photography. If we start, start typing in newborn, first you'll see several things pop up. A few that might apply to you are newborn pictures, newborn photography, but let's keep typing, newborn photography. Here we see a lot more items pop up. So newborn photography, props, near me, ideas, poses, outfits, tips, all words that might be relevant to your website as well. And when we head on over to Pinterest, we'll start with newborn. We see plenty of additional options appear too, such as hospital pictures, specifically boy or girl. And when we add photography and hit enter, you'll see all of those labels at the top. These are a gold mine for finding keywords because really it's just a big collection of things that people are often typing in Pinterest. Now there's a whole lot more when it comes to keyword research, but this should really get you started. So let's say you've done all of your research and you've decided that your keyword phrase is gonna be Minneapolis newborn lifestyle photography. Now let's start to incorporate that phrase into your SEO settings within Show It. The page title and meta description is the content that will show up in Google search results. Let's first start with the title. With this, it's important to keep it not only concise, but also consistent on every page. For example, let's maybe start with the name of the page and then like a dash or something followed by your business name. This is kind of a good rule to follow for each page of your website. For the home page, it might be nice to use the keyword or phrase as this first part of the title. So then in this case, we might end up with Minneapolis newborn lifestyle photography and then like a separator and then Carissa O'Connell photography, for example. Now, please remember that it's important to keep this concise and limit it to about 65 characters. Otherwise, you run the risk of it getting cut off in like the Google search results. Now, let's move down to the meta description. This description is actually the paragraph that shows underneath the title in the search results page. Now, with this, really think more quality over quantity because the description really isn't used for SEO purposes but more as the bait that's gonna draw people to click on your website. So you'll wanna write something that is engaging, enticing, and includes your key phrase. In this case, maybe our description is Carissa O'Connell Photography is a Minneapolis-based newborn lifestyle photographer capturing those special moments at the beginning of your little one's life. Now we could totally wordsmith this to make it even better, but you get the idea here. And with this box, be sure that you don't go over 150 characters, otherwise you run the risk of it getting cut off as well. And when I'm doing this, I like to just open up a new tab with a, a character counter that you just go type into Google and add all of your text into there and then play with it until you've got the correct character count. Now, if you're finding it a little bit tricky to work your keywords or phrase into your description, maybe consider rethinking this phrase 
to make it better match what's gonna be on your website. You can actually do more harm by using misleading words here. Google is smart and they will definitely pick up on it. Now feel free to add that keyword or phrase into the meta keywords box, but don't really spend too much time here because Google really doesn't even pay attention to it. So honestly, you could even leave this blank and not have to worry about it. And at the bottom here is the share image. Be sure to add a relevant and eye-catching image here because that's what's gonna show when the URL is shared on places like Facebook. So like we've discussed, you wanna be sure and use that keyword or phrase into your SEO settings, but it's also so important that you're sprinkling those keywords throughout your entire website's content. Now, another way to optimize your website for search engines is by labeling your photos. Before you even upload them to show it, I would recommend changing the file name to something that makes sense. But when you're in show it, you can also take some additional steps by adding a title and description to each image in order to give Google a better understanding of the content behind that image. Now, in my last video, I talked briefly about the text properties in show it, but let's dive a little bit deeper now. We can apply what's called an HTML text tag to each text box that's in our website. Now, what is this mumbo jumbo of an HTML text tag anyway? Well, search engines actually use them as a way to get an understanding of the content and organization of your website. Having them set up properly can really help Google better understand that information. When we're clicked into a piece of text, we'll go to the text properties tab on the right. Here you see a dropdown to adjust the tag that applies to the piece of text. These are automatically set based on the type of text box that you added to your website, but this is really far from foolproof. So it's important that we make some tweaks to every single text box and make sure that they're all set up properly going one by one. So let me break down what each one is and what they should be used for. H1 is for your top tier heading. So really you should have only one of these H1 headings on every single page. And it really should correlate to what that page is all about. So maybe for example, for the homepage, H1 is gonna be set to the text box that has maybe your brand statement in it or the name of your business at the very top of the page. Then the way that I like to think about this is to think as if you have a bulleted list of all of the content that's on each page. So with that, then H2 would be the first bullet point. And to better explain what I'm talking about here and where I'm going with this, let's keep moving on down the page. Often each new canvas defines the start of a new talking point or in this case, a bullet. So the next canvas or talking point is about the salon. So the salon would be an H2 heading and everything else would fall beneath that as either an additional set of bullets, making them H3 headings or paragraph text. Here, we just have a paragraph, which makes it pretty obvious to set it to the P, which stands for paragraph. But we follow that same pattern for all of the following few canvases. But once we get to the Our Services canvas, we'll see the H3 come into play where we label the style, cut, color, and product as H3 headings because they'd be the next bullet point over under the services, which is H2. Now we have a few other options left here, which are nav and div. Here on this canvas, we have a text box that's sending the visitor somewhere else on the site through the use of a click action. Since it's here simply just for the use of navigation. We don't want Google thinking that it's a piece of content and organizing it with our information. So we'll make that tag a navigation tag or nav. Now the div text tag is simply just for the text that doesn't serve any other purpose, but for just the purpose of visual effect. So as we pop onto the page here, we see that the word color overlaps the same word color just in a different font. So we don't want Google thinking that we're being repetitive by having two bullet points in the same plane. So we'll make sure to change it to div. So that's a basic breakdown on how to use HTML text tags. Now there's a lot more that you can do to help with your search engine optimization, but this really covers the basics. Now, once you have your SEO set up, the next thing you wanna start doing is prepping your website to go live by creating a coming soon page. And if you're wondering how the heck to set up a coming soon page, the next video is for you. So hit that video on your screen right now and be sure to subscribe so that you can continue polishing your presence online.